For several months now, you've been hearing a lot about Volkswagen's new Golf and Jetta, about their success in Europe, and the value they offer the American consumer. What you probably have not heard or read about, however, is very much product information about the cars themselves. Hello, I'm Jan Radcliffe, along with Roger Weber, welcoming you to a very special edition of the Volkswagen Communications Network. This is the first VCN service release, and in it we'll begin providing you with your first look at the new 85 Golf and Jetta. We'll take you to Germany for a short tour of the Wolfsburg assembly plant, where the new Jetta is being built briefly review some of the improvements that have been incorporated into both cars and we'll show you some new service adjustments also we'll briefly review the service literature that has been developed to support a successful introduction best of all today's program is just the beginning the volkswagen communications network will bring a number of additional service presentations into your dealership including one on golf and jetta's new cis electronic fuel injection system Obviously, we have a full agenda, both for the future and for today. So, let's get started with today's program by taking a short tour of the manufacturing facility where the new Volkswagen Jettas are now being produced. The vehicles you'll see in the upcoming manufacturing report are 1985 Golfs, destined for sale in Europe. The manufacturing techniques being used to assemble them, however, are the same ones that are now being employed to produce our new Jettas. Wolfsburg, West Germany, site of Hall 54, one of the largest and most modern assembly plants in the world. Automatic machines, transport systems, and welding robots all working together to produce Volkswagen's new Golf and Jetta. The production technology is specifically designed for optimum efficiency combined with extremely consistent quality. Because of the high level of automation, Individual parts must meet very precise specifications, tolerances of only a few tenths of a millimeter. There are no random checks here. Every vehicle body passes through an automatic measuring station that electronically processes and records dimensions. A 40 meter high warehouse holds up to 1,000 bodies. Computers control this stockpile, supplying assembly with the right body at the right time these computers control production on five separate assembly lines, each line producing 600 vehicles a day. Advances in automation have changed the production process, and only a few assembly procedures are still performed by hand. Data processing controls the entire process. Computers call up the required parts, forward them to the automatic machine stations, and provide the machines with the proper assembly instructions. Here, transmissions and drive shafts are assembled. This machine checks the torque of every bolt it installs before going on to the next. Every 20 seconds, an engine arrives at the drivetrain line. Robots attach alternators, install V-belts, and later tension them. Other robots bolt engines and transmissions together and attach the starter motors. Increased automation has resulted in the development of many new assembly processes. For example, the engine, transmission, drive axles and steering rack are assembled as a unit on the subframe. Toe is adjusted automatically to the closest possible tolerance. Here, a robot lifts and positions front body assemblies, a job once requiring four men. Batteries are also installed by robots and bolted into position. Doors that were once welded together are now bonded to ensure extra corrosion protection, and the adhesive is applied completely by robots. Every day, 18,000 meters of brake tubing are shaped for Golf and Jetta brake lines. Precision is vital and newly designed machines perform the task swiftly, accurately, and economically. To maximize space utilization, a new, larger, 14.5-gallon fuel tank is molded to fit snugly under the body. Here you see the tanks being automatically positioned and bolted into place. The pre-assembled drivetrain is precisely positioned and bolted to the body. Rear axles are also mounted automatically. A robot installs and secures the spare tire. 
Another machine positions the wheels, installs the bolts, and torques them. Volkswagen's Wolfsburg facility, among the world's most advanced vehicle production centers. A fascinating example of how Volkswagen is using automation to achieve greater productivity and higher product quality. As you know, the new Golf is being manufactured right here in America at Westmoreland, Pennsylvania. And although the production process is not as automated there as it is at Wolfsburg, the objectives, as well as many of the techniques used, are the same. Volkswagen's design objectives for the Golf were simple. Retain all the advantages of the Rabbit and set new standards in the areas of space utilization, interior comfort, and driving performance. To provide increased passenger room and comfort, along with additional cargo capacity, the vehicle had to be made larger. Compared with the 84 Rabbit, Golf is nearly five inches longer and more than two inches wider. And almost all of this additional size was devoted to enlarging the interior and increasing cargo capacity. Golf's overall exterior look is rounder, smoother, more aerodynamically refined. Through extensive research and development in Volkswagen's Wolfsburg wind tunnel, Golf's drag coefficient has been reduced by 18% to 0.35. And you can't fully comprehend just how much of an achievement that is until you take into account Golf's larger size. The front end is more tapered to help improve air penetration and distribution. The windshield angle has been increased. The vent windows flush mounted. New rear view mirrors are designed to help reduce wind resistance and keep the side windows cleaner. Golf even has new air channeling plates in front of the rear axle to help improve underbody airflow. All available engines for both the Golf and the Jetta have been improved. For example, the standard 1.8 liter fuel injected engine features such advancements as lighter pistons, longer connecting rods, and larger valves, and all contribute to the engine's increased power, flexibility, and smoothness. The air intake system has been rerouted to draw air from the right front fender well, increasing the available space in the engine compartment. And the use of hydraulic lifters for all gasoline engines not only helps reduce engine noise, it eliminates the need for 1,000 mile maintenance checks and routine valve adjustments. As mentioned earlier, the new Golf and Jetta share a vastly improved fuel system. Among the highlights, a new 14.5 gallon molded plastic fuel tank that increases fuel capacity by 40%, shaped to take maximum advantage of all available underbody space without affecting the luggage area, the new tank greatly expands the cruising range of both vehicles. Additionally, the expansion chamber and venting system are integral parts of the tank. During normal operation, the fuel tank is vented through the breather valve to the rollover valve, which is now located at the top of the tank near the filler neck. To gain access to the valve, the circlip, tank filler cap, and rubber boot must all be removed. Additionally, a two-way pressure relief valve is incorporated into the filler cap to prevent pressure buildup. Also new is the fuel pickup and sending unit assembly. To prevent fuel starvation during cornering with low fuel levels, all gasoline engines have a transfer pump attached to the sending unit. To remove the transfer pump and sending unit, unthread the lock ring and remove the pump and sending unit assembly. Notice that to ensure that the pickup unit can draw all available fuel from the tank, the lower portion of the sending unit is spring-loaded against the bottom of the tank. During reassembly, be sure that the seal is installed separately and pushed completely into position. Finally, align the arrow on the sending unit with the mark on the tank. This will guarantee that the fuel gauge reads accurately. Tighten the lock ring, reconnect the hoses, start the engine and check for leaks. Golf and Jetta also use a totally redesigned mounting system for the engine and transmission. First, the number of mounts has been reduced from four to three. The three new mounts are much larger in size and are strategically located for greater strength and increased noise isolation. And the need for service adjustments has been eliminated. The biggest story here, however, is the new hydraulic transmission mount. Consisting of a rubber element in a metal housing, 
The bottom is a hollow chamber filled with a special silicone fluid. A metal plate with metered openings is attached to the bottom of the rubber element and moves up and down in the fluid like a shock absorber valve when the mount is subjected to loads. Its advantage is that it can be both soft and hard. During low frequency vibration, such as that encountered when shifting or accelerating, the mount has a greater degree of stiffness because the fluid restricts the movement speed of the metering plate. However, during sharp or high frequency movement, such as that generated when the vehicle is idling, the mount is very soft and absorbs oscillations by the movement of the plate in the fluid. When installing the engine and transmission assembly, it's important to follow a specific sequence for tightening the mounting bolts. The two rear mounts should be tightened first, the front mount last. This ensures proper alignment of the mounts and prevents stress that might cause unnecessary noise. The lower control arms of the front suspension are mounted with new and uniquely shaped bonded rubber bushings that permit longitudinal movement of the front wheels. By allowing the wheels to move slightly forward and backward during acceleration, braking, and travel over rough roads, wheel alignment angles are kept constant, providing optimum road handling capabilities during a variety of driving conditions. If the lower ball joint has to be removed or replaced for any reason, always mark the position of the lower ball joint bolts before removal. And on reassembly, reinstall the ball joint in its original position. If the lower control arm has to be replaced, the ball joint will have to be positioned in the center of the mounting slot to ensure exact track dimensions and maintain precise CV joint tolerance. Golf and Jetta also have new rear suspensions. The springs and shock absorbers have been modified to increase suspension travel by 6%. Additionally, both vehicles have V-profile torsion beam rear axles with integral trailing arms similar to the Quantums. The advantage of this design is that rear wheel camber and tow remain virtually unaffected by suspension movement. The torsion beam rear axle is mounted to the vehicles with uniquely shaped rear bushings that eliminate any steering effect from the rear wheels during cornering. Standard design bushings tend to deflect under lateral loads, causing the rear axle to have a steering effect during cornering. This doesn't occur with Golf and Jetta's track correcting bushings. Instead, the lateral cornering load forces the bushings against tapered mounts, which keep the axle parallel and eliminate any steering effect. There are, of course, far too many changes, refinements, and improvements incorporated into the new Golf and Jetta to cover in a video program such as this one. So we've concentrated on some of the ones that we thought would interest you most. There are also a number of new service adjustments. And for the next few moments, we'll begin to familiarize you with some of them and the special tools you'll need to make them. To improve the interior appearance and the durability of the vehicles, Golf and Jetta have a new molded one-piece headliner. To remove the headliner, start at the front by removing the sun visor retaining screws. Next, remove the light bracket by pushing the retaining clip in to the left. Once the clip is pressed in, pull down on the light bracket and remove it. Once the light bracket's been taken off, go to the rear of the vehicle and remove the new rear trim molding. To provide sufficient clearance to remove the headliner, the screws that attach the molded trim to the top of the A, B, and C pillars must also be removed. You must also remove the bolts for the seat belt guides from the top of the B pillars. Next, the three door poles must be taken off by removing the four screws, two at each end, that are used to attach each one to the roof. Once the door poles have been taken off, pry off the two retaining clips above the driver's door. Lastly, using a screwdriver, pry out the button clips used to fasten the center of the headliner to the roof, and remove the headliner by sliding it to the rear of the vehicle. Golf and Jetta have a new rubber roof molding with integral rain channel. If it has to be removed for any reason, Begin by removing the molding at the rear with special tool 3107. Lever the molding up and work toward the front. Once the molding is completely free, inspect the plastic retainers and replace any that are damaged. Be sure all the clips are properly aligned before beginning reinstallation of the molding. Once they are properly aligned, 
mark their positions on the roof with a soft lead pencil. Next, coat the lip underneath with a suitable lubricant and begin installation at the rear of the car. Position the molding with a two millimeter gap at the C pillar, the B pillar on two door models. Press in the lower rubber edge, then continue to install the molding by driving it into position with special tool number 3126. As you continue the installation, be careful to only strike the molding next to the pencil marks that you made earlier, or you'll distort the molding. There's also a special tool, number 3114, for making door adjustments. It consists of two threaded adapters and a lever. To adjust a door, remove the hinge bolt and install and tighten the threaded adapter 3114-2 in its place. To prevent the paint from chipping, dampen a rag with synthetic resin thinner and wrap it around the hinge. Then, allow it to set for a few minutes to soften the paint. Having done this, you can now use the lever to carefully align the door. However, always remember to move the lever from side to side only. Up and down movements may break the tool. If the bumper must be removed, be sure that you only remove these two bolts. These two bolts hold the cross member to the frame and should not be loosened. The final service operation that we'll show you today is the removal of the radiator support and the radiator. This will give you greater access to the engine compartment for a variety of engine repair operations. Begin by removing the new plastic grill. To do this, first disengage the six clips along the top of the grill and lift it out. Next, detach the hood lock cable, which now has a ball at the front end and is no longer adjustable. When the retainer has been unclipped, the cable is completely separated from the front end. Once the cable has been detached and separated from the front end, remove the bolt from underneath the bumper the upper radiator retainers, the upper bolts, the front bolts, and finally, disconnect the headlight wires. Having done this, the complete radiator support can be taken off. Next, it's a relatively simple matter to drain the coolant from the radiator, disconnect the hoses, and remove the retainers so that the radiator can be lifted out to gain complete access to the engine compartment. We may have made the performance of the various service operations and adjustments that you've seen today look a little easier than you'll find them to be in the shop, but our purpose was to begin familiarizing you with the procedures. Still, we think you'll agree that you know a lot more about the new Golf and Jetta than you did when this program started. You've seen the dedication to quality and craftsmanship that's an integral part of Golf and Jetta's manufacture. And heard about some of the improvements that were designed into both new Volkswagens. You've also had an opportunity to see some of the new service adjustments and operations. To help ensure that you're prepared to support a successful introduction, Volkswagen of America's service department has developed a comprehensive introductory information package. There's an introductory service information book, an illustrated guide to Golf and Jetta's many technical features, together with complete explanations of their mechanics, functions, and customer benefits. A maintenance and adjustments book that provides the specifications and procedures needed to perform the basic service checks that are an essential part of proper pre-delivery inspection, as well as procedures for performing other vehicle adjustments during scheduled maintenance. Also included is a wiring diagram book with a simple circuit-oriented format that will be invaluable in troubleshooting and repairing electrical problems, as well as an operational and testing guide to the new CIS electronic fuel injection system. Finally, you'll have a complete service repair manual microfiche, which provides all the details and procedures needed to perform more complicated and involved repairs. As promised, today's program has been a full one. And we're looking forward to bringing you more service programs in the future. And Volkswagen of America is counting on each of you to make the commitment and follow up with the effort that will help guarantee that the new Golf and Jetta are among the most popular and the most successful Volkswagens ever brought to market.